Hey guys, so instead of showing you a random episode from us traveling from A to B, going from Tenerife to Norway, um, we decided to make a little uh, test episode of a future, something we want to do more in the future, which is actually uh, a podcast. And uh, it's going to be like a part of the whole Mind Venture thing. So you either have the Mind Venture vlog or the Mind Venture pod. And in this episode, obviously, we chose to talk to Pavel and go in a little bit more in, in details of his life and why he chose to become a freediver. And for those of you who are interested in freediving, it could be an interesting conversation. This first test is not really the best. We had to... Uh, be a little primitive on the shooting and the location and the sound so um, but yeah it's uh, it's still an interesting conversation for those who want to dive deeper into uh, to free diving and maybe see if this is something for you in the future so yeah check it out i lived in ireland for 10 years close yeah. to the sea as well but never had the warm sea so close to uh, where i yeah. Where I uh, lived, you know, I kind of I open a window in the morning uh, and I could see the sea, but Irish Sea is not that nice. No, you know? it's uh, a lot more choppy, a lot more windy, mm. and uh, colder, a lot colder. And green and brown. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there are places you can find uh, which are super nice because mm. you also have uh, like vegetation underwater, so you have mm. um, kelp and stuff, and that is super nice, you know. Um, I really like kelp uh, and diving into the kelp. Mm. You can have two, three meters kelp. Yeah, and you yeah, just yeah. drop down into yeah. the kelp, and then all of a sudden it feels like you're in underwater forest. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You're like it's just super, super crazy. Yeah, it's super crazy uh, to see. And there's a lot of fish hiding there, a lot of animals. You know, uh, yeah, 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 it's yeah. a lot more diversity than like uh, say here in Canary Islands. Mm. Uh, but here you get to see um, maybe. Um, different diversity in terms of uh, fish because you have the pelagics, you have mm. uh, the mammals, you have the dolphins, mm. turtles, you never see that uh, in uh, Ireland, mm. you know. But yeah, in terms of colors, it's maybe more colors there, you know. Mm. And, uh, the flora and the water flora is amazing. But yeah, this is where I started free diving, uh, just by snorkeling, you know, just by mm. curiosity, being curious and taking a break, break from everyday life. Yeah, my... Uh, my uh, job was totally different. I was working in a pretty busy environment in uh, in a hotel work, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, managing a bigger uh, workplace, having uh, quite a good good few people working under me, and then having to talk to the yeah. uh, bosses <laughs> above me, you know. It's I think it's everyone's story. It's stressful, yeah. It can be in, yeah. It can be a little bit stressful those type of work situations yeah yeah for me it was a turning point when i kind of like okay say uh i just felt like okay uh, you either stay doing this what you do and then you, you just kind of get uh, uh how to say uh comfortable with that you know yeah and then you just the days goes by and yeah you know, it's yeah, repetitive. yeah yeah i mean so it is comfortable you know yeah, oh, yeah. If you want to be comfortable, uh, it's yeah. fine. You know, I mean, okay, you have to pull up with it, but, but then that comfort also has a price. Yeah, you know exactly. And that price is, you yeah. know, you gotta show up every day, and you gotta deal with that stress, and you gotta deal with uh, yeah, the, exactly the yeah. chasing of something that doesn't really really lead anywhere. You know, yeah, yeah, it gives you the comfort of knowing that the bills are paid, but yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, going and making a living as a free diver or as a skydiver. Uh, you yeah. know, if you ask anybody on the street, they'll be going like, saying, yeah. okay, you're crazy, you know, <laughs> but I mean, you but know. if you cut the bills to an absolute minimum, it's, uh, it's quite easy actually yeah. compared to, uh, yeah, 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 because yeah. yeah. you're paying most the of the time for your comfort. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. the thing, you know, that the yeah. comfort has a price too. Yeah. And, and that price is not cheap. You know, if I look at. What some of these people, of, you know, my friends and, and people who are choosing the more regular lifestyle, they spend a lot of money, you know, and a, a yeah. lot of money on yeah. things that, you know, if they just swapped it up a little bit, yeah, they could just actually be out and live their dream and make... At least, you know, it's not like you need to make so much that you can buy a bunch of houses and stuff, but be able to at least 
get by and with yeah. that you're doing something you love uh, yeah. along the way you know yeah. there are plenty of opportunities um, I think you have to commit to give them a chance you know mm. so like this is a hard part you know yeah, yeah, yeah it's scary because, uh, it's yeah it's really scary yeah. it's like taking a leap huh? but it, I mean at the same time if you look at us coming from a very good part of the world mm. it's actually not that scary exactly yeah. because you either got to be a criminal or addicted to heavy substances to really really go yeah, shit. yeah. you know in worst case you're gonna be like okay it didn't really work out you yeah. can always go back and, and yeah you can and, always go back yeah. yeah there's always that safety net yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. well for me another reason why i uh, um decided to change was i couldn't look at because i you know like working in an uh, environment like hotels and you know like um you are, how to put it, you are um, seeing this every day where you uh, have people come in and um, the abundance of everything and then not appreciating it, you know, mm. and the waste that comes with it yeah. will break my heart, you yeah. know. And um, I think this is a, some, something that, you know, like going even like 100 years back, you know, we were like, um, as, a, as a people, we were more connected to nature mm. and, you know, mm. and uh, now it's just it's so easy to go and get anything, especially yeah. from the kind of world we are from, you know, yeah. uh, you kind of take it as for granted, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and uh, when I saw like, uh, basically you bring a food on a table and then someone goes like, ah, I don't feel like it. And then you just put it in the bin. Mm. And then you're just uh, looking at all the, all the stuff that um, the resources, the work and mm. uh, primarily the um, uh, things like the animal products, you know, mm. and uh, you just at some point, uh, uh, get sad, you know, because yeah. it just goes wasted, you know. Yeah, and 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 we feed the uh, we feed yeah. that sort of lifestyle too, you know, by by keeping it alive. Yeah. So of course, <laughs> when when you sit there on the other end of the scale and you know that because of your work, this is possible, you know. And yeah, yeah. It really, yeah, but it's it's good to it's good to reflect on it a little bit. You yeah. Know? I, I see it myself too with traveling the world and. Yeah, and, I, and I'm, I'm not a, a vegetarian or vegan, uh, no. but um, I do believe, and I was brought that way, that, you know, if you do get um, uh, something like a piece of meat, you know, you better eat it, you know, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. E you better though, need it, you know. <laughs> even though I actually turned vegetarian, I was out eating some dinners with some friends of mine and his mm. family, and they, they bought this very, you know, very... Uh, amazing meat, uh, very luxurious type mm. of uh, restaurant and when they were done eating there was still something left and I was like you know I, I hadn't eaten meat in almost a year so I was like you know you know what that thing is going to the waste anyway yeah you know? yeah so I just kept uh, I just ate the rest of it yeah you better get used you know yeah yeah and before yeah. I used to eat meat like seven days a week you yeah. know? so yeah. I was very into this whole uh, I mean, for me, you know, I'm a very small guy. I'm, uh, you know, super skinny, super light. <laughs> and as soon as I quit eating meat, it was like, whoa, I was in free fall, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I think my, my body has been very used to that sort of, um, mm. that sort of uh, food. And, uh, and, and now I feel like it's really good not to do it anymore. Uh, now as well, when I'm following Alex a bit more around the world, uh, I'm definitely going to... Uh, try and do as much as possible the vegan version mm. to really learn more about uh, getting access to proper because like you you can become a vegan and still eat uh, you know the, the shitty um, processed vegan food yeah and then you know you start to question yourself like well now okay obviously like for me it was to do it for the animals but I don't also want to hurt myself, you know, I yeah, feel like yeah. the processed food, yeah. either if it's vegan or non-vegan, yeah. it's still bad for you, you yeah. know, so now, like, I see with Alex is, like, how, you know, he can make more food out of the raw stuff and and then have more access or easier access to, to learning how to, to prepare these uh, meals because I've been used to yeah. uh, restaurants for 10 years, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy. If, if no, you no, travel no. around... Yeah, it's very hard. It's very, very hard, hard to keep, uh, keep on uh, having a good diet. And especially if you need to perform, uh, yeah. it's super hard. Yeah. So my hat's off to anyone that uh, is a vegetarian or vegan and uh is yeah, the vegetarian is not that hard no you can always yeah. go for the eggs yeah. and you can always do the cheese and and that's going to give you a lot of what you kind of need in a yeah. way 
but uh, definitely I've seen sometimes, uh, for example, when I was in Namibia, I tried to go for the full vegan option mm. with some other influencers on that trip. And I was like, wow, I'm happy we're not doing big activities yeah. because I, that I wouldn't be able to do. Yeah, the, 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 definitely the, I, I uh, around once a year for about five or six months, I turned at full, full vegetarian. Normally it's uh, mm -hmm. in the spring and uh, before the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, I just kind of like, uh, I don't know, I just do it. Uh, I feel like I, uh, mm. I want to, you know, mm. and I'm staying here and it's easy, yeah. you know, like, because I know where to go, get what, yeah. you know, but if you have to travel and you go to places where uh, maybe getting a, um, um, a dairy stuff is uh, not, maybe not so safe or not so good, mm. you know. Uh, I'm, I'm maybe talking outside of like kind of uh, our countries. Um, then yeah, it, it already being vegetarian to satisfy everything. If you are doing uh, a lot of mm. big activities daily, it's hard, and doing doing it sustainably, it's it's hard. And being vegan is totally. I think it's really really you have to put your mind to it. Yeah. Yeah, you you have to learn it for sure, and it's yeah. uh, it's definitely like a transition period there. Uh, but I mean, uh, once, uh, yeah, once you really go into it, it's probably, I mean, when I look at Alex, for example, for him, it's so easy, even in the places where it's hard, Yeah. but it's that whole thing. Like, I mean, now it, you can eat a lot of nuts and that's going to help a lot. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, for me, I, I'm also like the same. I'm like, I can be a little bit weak. You know, I was actually surprised that I managed to quit meat totally mm -hmm. because I knew that like, I'm so weak for the. I, I had this yeah. also a couple of times, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But somehow this year, uh, I uh, was full vegetarian for mo like most of the year, mm. and uh, I uh, I had I had no problems. Mm. Yeah, I had no problems. But before I had it two or three times, yeah, where I felt like I am. Uh, it also feels like you're almost like anemic or something. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. Originally, I started free diving uh, as a spur fishing. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I was sort of it was snorkeling slash spur fishing. You know, mm -hmm. now uh, in place where I started, it, it, spur fishing is super easy. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but here it's, it's much harder. Yeah, but it is more rewarding because you have a bigger variety of fish and stuff like this. Now I always try to. I know a lot of people don't know uh, maybe so much about spear fishing other than you go and hunt for fish, you get fish. Mm. But it is, um, in my opinion, depending on what's, what's the necessity of you doing it, mm. if you're doing it for fun or for experience, you know, most of the time you probably won't even go home with a uh, fish. I, in my, uh, in my uh, case, I, uh, maybe out of 10 times I go and maybe uh, two or three times I actually do get something. You know, mm. and it's mostly because I'm trying to be as uh, selective as possible. Yeah. So I uh, select already species that I'm hunting for in my head before I go in the water, mm. and then even I select the female or male uh, depends on the reproduction at the time of the year and some uh, stuff like this. And then obviously there is a size, you know. Mm. So you could you could see the exact species you're going for, but if it's uh, just a little bit too small uh, or too big. Mm. Uh, it's uh, sort of gone through the net, you know. Mm. So uh, uh, you can be you can be very very selective uh, in what kind of fish you are fishing for, and uh, then this is another problem because uh, the not every fish is healthy to eat, you know. Oh. So uh, uh, I seen some really big fish. I didn't. Uh, there's no point of catching them because they are not safe to eat. So you will only end up with a that fish as a trophy and that's yeah. not what I'm after. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's just different state of mind when you're doing spear fishing yeah. Yeah, than free diving. In free diving, uh, most of the time you see more fish because you're in different state of mind. Mm. It's somehow the, the liquid, the, the water is, um, I feel like it's connecting you with everything. Yeah, you know? yeah. So if you are in, you're hunting. Yeah, um, it's it's almost like hunter. connection to the fishes around. They, yeah, yeah. they know. They yeah, know. This guy's hunting for you. Yeah, yeah. So they know it as soon as you enter the water. But if you want to eat fish, it's definitely a much more rewarding and genuine way to eat fish. Well, I made a decision yeah. that I am only going to eat the fish that I catch myself. Yeah, that's and uh, I haven't had a fish for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah. I mean, uh, we should all be like that, you know? Like, yeah, if you want to eat uh, animals, well, you got to go catch them. And I've been, I've been hunting with uh, vegans. Yeah. Because, of, you know, the, the experience of actually going back to, to basics, you yeah, know? Yeah. And, uh, okay, this is how hard it is to get the food, you know? You will appreciate it more, you know. For sure, you know, yeah. and and it's not really about you know the the whole concept of not uh, specifically eating an animal because it's an animal. Yeah, but it's yeah. more about like the way we are now actually producing it, producing uh, you know. Yeah. So, so everything we eat and yeah. everything we get, it's like it's so they have so much trauma in it, you know. So yeah, first of all, full of antibiotic uh, hormones, yeah. etc., yeah. etc., and then. On top of that is the energy yeah. of, of the the spe- of the the being that they are traumatized, they're depressed, they're mm. afraid, and and all of this is like you know we feed our ourselves with it, so we bring this trauma into our own bodies, you know. But it's it's non like it's it's hard to notice it, even though like you see now in society that more and more people are becoming depressed, they're full of anxiety. They're unhappy, and of course, it's like everything is connected. So yeah, yeah, sure, you might hate your job, but they also probably did that hundred years ago. But it wasn't as as much uh, rate of the same things that we have today, you know. And I think a lot of it comes from the food. Yeah, I I think uh, yeah, it's a very interesting point uh, mm. that you made. And I think it's maybe the first time I heard uh, someone putting it this way. Yeah, but uh, well, that's what happened to me when I when I did some some work with that that made me quit eating meat. Yeah, in general. Yeah, mm. I tell you, uh, I grew up on uh, since I was a kid uh, on the, we had a farm. You oh, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I grew up with animals. We were yeah. taking care of animals. We were uh, even the the food and feed for the animals mm-hmm. we grown ourselves. So yeah. it's a lot of work and it's well, basically a healthy farm. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's not an industrial uh, yeah. meeting the demand of yeah, society. And, yeah, and, and actually since I uh, basically um, started in my own life, you know, mm-hmm. and start working in a, in a place where uh, you basically are feeding people and then mm-hmm. it is industry, it mm-hmm. is a factory, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's factory at the start until the end, yeah, you know. Yeah, for sure, for And sure. Uh, is it uh, healthy? I... Uh, I don't think so. It is for sure comfortable, yeah, you know. Yeah. It is for sure comfortable and profitable, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, is are the animals, uh, you know, do they have any any like you know, like I don't, I can't even imagine what's going on. Yeah, in, it's not in, like on yeah. the farm that you grew up yeah, on, you know. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. you probably grew up with the fact that they were they were happy, uh, happy yeah, animals. Yeah, you know? I, I mean any. Uh, as far as I know, uh, anybody who is, um, um, you know, taking care of uh, animals mm. uh, as on a farm, he wants to have at the end a good mm. product, yeah, you know, for sure, to, for sure. to, to eat himself. Mm. So he knows, I mean, it's a, it's a pure logic that mm. you want to make sure that the animals uh, are oh, having sure. uh, a proper life, you know, yeah. until... Uh, decide you know you decide this time to you know yeah because you either choose that or you choose to profit you know and, and, yeah. for, and i think now for farms that hold on to the past it becomes unsurvivable for them because you know they, they're not yeah. going to make enough money on the yeah. meat and yeah but it is it is um like for example we it's not not every animal has to die you know in oh. a farm you know for example uh, you, you, you most of the time uh, you have an animal like that that's milk producing mm. like a cow yeah mm. that cow um, uh, is just giving you milk mm. pretty much mm. you know you're you're taking the milk you're not taking everything every day you know yeah. you're taking whatever you need you know and that that uh, cow lives the whole life until yeah. basically yeah because it is a cow that gives you milk and yeah. then you give it the food whatever you know mm. it's not like it has to die by you uh, no. you know same with the chickens and other mm. animals you know like eggs and things like this you know uh, lo- lots of times you have uh, animals that uh, mm. just producing uh, eggs and things like this and then you use the eggs yeah. and they 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 and, 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 then, and then it becomes a more genuine like you, you work yeah. together with the animals so for sure like if i were to you know have 
yeah, have the space and time to, to have that in my life. Like I have a friend in, in Hawaii, he has his own chickens. Mm. And, you know, in that sense, I could even be fully vegan. Yeah. But still like work with, uh, yeah. with the, the, the friends uh, that yeah. he, like he feeds his chicken with like cocoa and, yeah. and really healthy stuff. So yeah. for sure, like then it, it's a genuine relationship. Yeah, yeah. And then you can both benefit from it because obviously the chicken will be kept alive in a safe environment in a happy place yeah. instead of yeah. being non-existent or just being yeah. uh, locked up in, uh, in, yeah. in in an industry. You know? Yeah, it's very sad. Yeah, it's very sad. So for I'm, sure I'm surprised. Way to do it. I'm surprised that actually uh, this is the way it, it went. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah actually, yeah. like now it's uh, like. Um, I mean, yeah. it's the profit from the. The, the food industry and then versus the the health industry, the pharmaceutical industry and, and how they work together in the sense of, you know, you have one product that everyone can profit on and makes you sick and then the other one comes in and saves the day, right? Mm. But at the end of the day, all we need to do is to change the eating habits and we can just eliminate most of the pharmaceutical industry overnight. Yeah. But of course, we, we are humans that are rather, like you said, you know, it's comfortable. Yeah, it's comfortable. It's more comfortable to eat that cheeseburger and to just chill and, uh, and buy something here and there. And, and then if you get into the situation where you're suffering uh, physically and mentally, you just pop the pill. I think everyone should be put in a position where they actually go and uh, kill their own chicken for yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. for, a, yeah, for yeah. a dinner, you yeah. know. And then I think a lot of people would actually. Uh, the hum- compassion would uh, for sure, for would sure, kick you know? in, you know? It's, it's quite ironic in Norway. We, we had this, like, this story of, like... It was actually a very good, um, very good uh, childcare, daycare place that brought, their, uh, brought the, the kids to this uh, slaughter place. <laughs> <laughs> you you do you do the, in Norwegian girls they do they did this kind of stuff quite yeah. often, no? And it's like yeah. it's like reality check. You know, and and, and it was <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, it's like you know all the all the parents they got so pissed off and they were so angry and like yeah. what are you doing? And like, yeah. And and because some of these kids came home and they didn't want to eat the the meat anymore, and it's like well, why uh, hold on to a lie? And blame it on someone else instead of just being like, okay, let's show them the truth. And then do we still want to hold on to it? Because if every single person went to a, uh, an industrial yeah, yeah. slaughterhouse today, yeah. they would quit overnight. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So that's also why it's illegal yeah. to film there. It's illegal to, yeah. to, to show any of that yeah. stuff. And of course, the parents, they, they, they rather want to hold on to the lie than to just be like, okay, now we have to think differently and we have to, to, to look at things differently and... And, and and we see it even in Norway, which yeah. is a very open-minded country. This one woman, she's a she's a blogger, and she she said uh, publicly that she wasn't going to feed her three months old child uh, uh, meat. She didn't say no to animal products, but specifically meat. And uh, now she is under the radar of uh, of uh, childcare, you know. Mm. A, a super healthy family like uh, yeah. with uh, yeah. like, well I think that was yeah that, that was I think the point that uh, um, when I when I was uh, at home on the farm mm-hmm. I think I was maybe like seven or eight year old when my father told me okay you want a dinner go and pick uh, a rabbit uh, kill it skin it clean it and bring it to kitchen mm-hmm. you know and you go you go there and you you have a rabbit you're looking at the rabbit and he's happy <laughs> yeah, and then Go, imagine going through your head like you're thinking, okay, now I have to go and, uh, and kill the rabbit. Mm. Like, how are you going to do it? Any healthy person would feel compassionate you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, to yeah. do this, you know. But then at the end of the day, you're hungry. You need to yeah, eat, yeah. you know. And then, but yeah, yeah well, it, if, you, if, you, if you are in that position and you can't choose, yeah. then, you know, the vegetable sounds like a real, um, a real easier option if, you're sure, com- if, sure. if you are so compassionate about... Yeah. Uh, and not going that far. Mm. And I think that would just select a whole lot of um, people out, you know, um, yeah. and make them maybe uh, happier about themselves, you mm. know. Yeah. And it's nothing to do with those that would go and kill their rabbits. No, 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 for sure. It's like, you know, I don't see it as a, as a bad thing in that sense. I would say that nature is bad because nature has been... It's a circle. For, for, it's for a life circle. Yeah, for billions know? of years. So, yeah. 
you know it's more about the way we do it you know and disconnected uh, yeah yeah, disconnected. yeah the disconnected way yeah. because of course if you manage to go out there and, and hunt for some meat in the forest with a bow and arrow i mean you know you really you really worked hard for it and 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 you know you can enjoy that meat you and you know, can't do it every day twice no and, and but, <laughs> but you can enjoy the meat knowing that yeah. you know the meat has none of the none of the chemicals and yeah. the animals were legitimately peaceful and happy yeah. at uh, yeah at the, the time yeah. of the, the the catch yeah so but for sure you know like i think uh, us as humans we are too weak to even go into the state of mind of going and getting it ourselves you know mm. yeah, yeah disconnected i call it yeah. I definitely super, you know like uh uh, just that's why freediving is so good you know because yeah. you can reconnect with nature in a, in, a, in a profound way that's why I started yeah I just like out of curiosity first time um, and then you know uh, there is something about freediving uh, I don't think you have the same feelings maybe scuba diving but okay you are down under for maybe a, a lot shorter than mm. a scuba dive so it's not so much about you know, looking around, you know, and maybe exploring caves and things mm. like this, even though you can do it on free dive. But the free dive itself is just kind of like... meditation. Yeah, it, yeah. it's just... Uh, for you, meditation, I think for me, feels like uh, I can really uh, feel myself, yeah. you know. Um, and you really, the whole focus mm. that normally is spread around uh, your surrounding mm. is now turned on yourself, mm. you know, and... You really feel like what's going on uh you really need to focus on uh what your body is doing what you're feeling you know and uh we don't know there's so many things that um, there's still left to be researched about what's happening when we free dive i mean we know about the mammalian dive reflex and uh, how that helps us to be underwater um but uh, there's so many things uh, and I believe that there are uh, all kinds of hormones and things uh, that are released during yeah, the free dive. Yeah, sure, 100%. Yeah, they are basically um, part of the primer instincts mm. uh, and this is how we, why we feel what we feel and uh, this is what I yeah, think. Because it feels really good. Yeah. And as yeah. soon as you come back, you're like, you're tired but at the same time you're rested. Yeah, yeah. So it's very, like right now I'm like, I'm so peaceful. I can just sit here and look out on the ocean and yeah. not feel the need to like, ah, oh, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. Like, yeah, you're just so at peace with everything. Yeah, I always get the uh, questions. You know, mostly like beginners they come or people you you meet on the street and they're interested. You know, and uh, most of them they uh, picture free diving as somebody being stuck underwater, uh, fighting for their breath, and yeah, you know. Yeah. But uh, when actually I had people and I had people from army and so on that came and uh, did the free diving. And then they actually realized, well, as soon as you, you let go and you relax and you start actually listening to what your body is telling you, you realize that your body is telling you you're fine. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're fine. And yeah, I never felt anything there that, yeah. oh shit, I gotta breathe. Yeah. Yeah. It never, it never happened once. Yeah. It, and you feel yeah. fine and. It's strangely, you feel like you belong there. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Strangely, it's super strange because it ever gets me every time when I'm down there and you're doing a hang, you're staying down there or you're just swimming around and the fish are looking at you like, what are you, you know, trying to figure out whether you are a predator or yeah. you are just one of them guys, you know, <laughs> and because, yeah, and you just uh, feel that you are a lot more connected uh, mm. through the medium uh, with the life that is around you and you it's almost like you become a part of uh, underwater. For sure, for yeah. sure. And for a there, short it, moment. Everything yeah. is so peaceful there because as soon as you go down there, whatever there is, what is going on here, it could be, you know, it could be World War Three. Mm. As soon as you go down, it's all irrelevant, it's all forgotten, it's non-existent. Yeah. You know, so you can even have stress and have anxiety for whatever there is, mm. but it will be a therapy for you, you know, like, because mm. you will you will be able to let go. And I think a lot of days in, in today's society, the problem is, is that we have too much shit. Mm -hmm. There is too much shit, there's too much noise. You know, mm -hmm. you open the news and you're going to be bombarded with shit. You go mm -hmm. to the office, you're going to be bombarded with stress. You come home and there's going to be some sort of things, uh, depending on how stressful both persons had 
Uh, and if there is kids involved as well, there is uh, stress related to, we need to make sure we follow the, the, the routines, the yeah. schedules given from the schools, blah, blah, blah. So it's constant and you never manage to shut it off, mm. which is actually becoming too much because, you know, our world, the outside world has, um, has uh, modernized itself extremely fast. Mm. But this, it's still, uh, it's still uh, stuck in, uh, in back in time, uh, Stone Age. Mm. We're still Stone Age apes. Mm. So you can imagine if you put, if you took like, if, if we managed to travel in time now, we just went back, picked someone up from there, and put it into this society like that. How destructive it will be for the mind of that uh, that human, mm. and how, uh, yeah, how quickly it will become unhappy. Yeah. And, and it's very interesting to see now like how fast we're evolving mm. but this takes millions of years of evolution mm. to catch up yeah. so it doesn't matter if we put in all these digital things in the brain it's still going to mess with the chemical receptors Yeah. you know the chemical receptors needs you know your mind needs that peace it needs that like letting go of the things mm. that you're constantly holding on to now the fact that people who live normal healthy lives have to take sleeping pills just to be able to to turn it off because you you can't manage to turn it off anymore Mm. you know and there that's where i feel like for example free diving Mm. because a lot of people are you know like when you talk about meditation and stuff you know it it fits a very certain group of people Mm. i would think that it would fit me but it actually doesn't Mm. because i'm more in the person who needs to do my meditation do stuff, through yeah. activity yeah for yeah. example such as base jumping I'm saying, yeah. uh, now free diving mm. uh, and these sorts of activities because then for me it's a lot easier to disconnect and go into that state of mind mm. but if i'm sitting down going into that state of mind i'm going to think about all all the things i'm trying to create in my life mm. You know, I, because I'm I'm not trying to disconnect from things mm. in, in a way. I'm, I'm trying to create more and, and to go further. But I feel like, for example, this can be a very good alternative to people who maybe are not as good or has tried meditation and maybe it didn't really work for them. So, for example, trying this could be something mm. that could be very healthy for them, you know. There's a lot of people turning into free diving now, and it's not only because you know there is uh, there's more media about it, uh, and it is something that you know um, is looks good, you know, mm. looks good and uh, looks cool, you mm. know. Um, but um, it's actually people who are at the peak of their working age that are looking for something yeah. like this, you it's know, something, and something that is yeah. not the extreme, you know, yeah. something that doesn't require a bunch of like you know, like with scuba diving, okay. I mean, it looks super enjoyable, but there is a lot of like, okay, we need to do this, we need to get the tanks, mm-hmm. we need to go on the boats, we need to... So, I mean, for people that doesn't have access to that, for example, freediving, as soon as you have either a lake or an ocean, you can do it, you know? Yeah, in freediving, you have a freedom. Uh, in, super in, freedom. Yeah, in scuba diving, once you're there, you have your tanks, you have this, you know, you, you have to follow the plan, you mm. have to go down, you have to go to that depth. Mm. What, if, what if you don't want to go to that depth, mm. you know, but then... Your body wants to go to that depth. So you have to go there as well, you know. Uh, so you have to follow a plan. Mm. In free diving, you're free. You're free. You do, you can, you do what you want, yeah. you know. You want to go to ten meters, fine. You go to ten. You want to go to thirty meters, you go to thirty. It was so funny earlier when I went down to the twenty meter, and I'm just hanging out, looking at the wreck, and I look over at the, the scuba, and and then you know I don't know if it was a she or he, but they were looking at me like. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> like on a strange fish. <laughs> yeah, because like they are at a certain depth where you know they are imagining that no, no, but you have to have that to be able to go to that depth. Yeah, yeah. But what they don't know is that actually free divers can go way deeper than yeah. scuba divers yeah. unless, of course, you do the mm. the proper uh, work diving stuff where you deeper. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I was always thinking, oh yeah, okay, I, I, I don't scuba dive. I've done it a couple of times, you mm. know, but I don't, I haven't, you know. It's gone a nice there. feeling too. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's a different uh, way of seeing what's under. Mm. Um, but I was thinking, okay, you know, I was even in process of going, okay, now I'm going to go and do the, the, the scuba stuff, you know, to get a course and get the all certification so I can, you know. But I know, like, like it. But then I have to, you know, I have to do this, I have to do that, and I have to do all, so all, all these things 
just yeah. to get to 20 meters. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I'm thinking, so much easier <laughs> to just hold my breath and go down. Yeah, because you know? now, like, how, if you were to, let's say you were only going to 20 meters and you're at your best physical, your best prepared, how many minutes could you be able to stay down there? At, at 20 meters? Yeah. Um, well, I've done, I've done dives to like four minutes at 20 meters, you know, mm -hmm. um, but it's not so much about the time, you know? No, no. Yeah. Um, people ask me, you know, like, so, okay, how long you can hold your breath? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Like, you, you know, you just said it that mm -hmm. at any given time you haven't felt like yeah, you need to breathe, yeah. you know? And that's the good part about it. Yeah. You don't want to uh, push yourself. You go down. And when you feel like, you come up, you know. But the time you're down there, even though it's a short time, it it's enough for you, you know. Yeah, it's enough to see things. Yeah. And I tell you, if you do uh, if you do two minute dark time, you can see and snor and, and swim through and dive almost any dive mm. locations mm. in the world. Yeah, in two minutes dive time on free dive. You can go to that wreck and go forward, backwards through the wreck and come back up in two minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, and that's what takes a scuba diver maybe a 15 minutes to swim around the whole wreck, you know, to see it from all angles. Yeah. You can do it on one free dive. Yeah. Uh, and so just not only because you're swimming, uh, you're moving faster, but uh, it's just, you're more efficient, you know, and you're yeah. more aware of what's going on. Plus, plus yeah. the time that, for example, you know, your four minutes feels a lot longer than four minutes of scuba diving. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and actually mm -hmm. four minutes, uh, and that's what the reason why I asked, because like a lot of people that maybe are like questioning whether they should do one or the other, mm. they might think that, well, if a free dive is going to be so short, but it's actually not the case. I mean, four minutes underwater enjoying and being comfortable. Yeah. It's actually a very long time. It is very long. You know, time. You, yeah. you can enjoy a lot, and then all you gotta do is to go back up, refill, and go back down. Yeah, yeah. So it's not um, uh, it's not only four minutes. It's yeah. actually four minutes at a time. Yeah, the sensation, the awareness uh, you get in that free dive mm. is uh, you don't need uh, more. Not even four minutes. You, you two, if you do two minutes, and you can quite quickly get to two minute dive time uh, within a training. Um, you don't need more and you're staying safe and you're not so tired because you're doing four minutes all the time you get tired but you in, in with two minute dive time you can go 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 and you'll see more than being yeah. down there uh for maybe 45 minutes or one hour yeah. or, you know you can swim on a surface where you want to go down swim down and then you can do one big sweep swim around and yeah. the thing is we seen uh uh, was it last week a whale swam to us? Yeah, pure cura curiosity. You don't get that uh, so much in scuba mode, you know, no. uh, because um, you do that, you do get that if you are in a place where fish are used to For scuba sure. divers. Sure. You go anywhere else I, outside of any dive locations, and you don't get fish swimming to you out of curiosity when you're scuba diving. No. But as a free diver, mm. you can go and surprise fish. Mm. You can go and nearly touch fish mm. if you're silent enough. Mm. Uh, and this you cannot do as a, scu as a no. scuba diver. And even uh, with the rebreathers and, and things like this, you can do certain stuff, but you know, there are the fish that are in intrigued. They're, they are, when they are um, in feeding mode, uh, they come and check you out. We, we've seen uh, with Alex one time, I think, uh, we were going down and there was a huge fish passing by just out of curiosity to come and check us out. Uh, that whale, uh, dolphins come over, they look at mm -hmm. you, you know, or you yeah, are. you're a part of them, you know. As soon as you have yeah. all the gear and they make yeah. the noise, yeah. then you suddenly don't belong there. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. And this is how the spare fishing works as well. Uh, you know, uh, you need to trigger the curiosity in the uh, fish to come close to you. You don't go chasing fish. The fish come to you actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, you really at that point you really feel like you are a part of the mm. being part of underwater world. You know, uh, and that's really cool. It, the connection. You know, mm. until you pull the gun out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's why we become humans again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Oh, no, that's good. I, I really, uh, I really appreciate, uh, you know, the, the, what it gives, you know, just that little that I did already yeah. now. Yeah. And, and, you know, before I was always hesitant of going mm. deeper because, you know, you don't have someone pushing you to do it and you always think that, well, mm. going to 20 years or 30 You don't years, understand so much what's going on. That's the thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. So now, like, I would feel so comfortable going to 20 meters. Yeah. If I have the equipment of the, yeah. the buoy on the top and yeah, when I was starting this uh, free diving thing, you know, uh, oh, I remember saying, oh, if I can only go to ten meters, yeah. I'm happy, yeah. you know, and I just go down ten meters and stay there. <laughs> That's all I need, you know, and uh, That's what you're doing on the warm up course. Yeah and, yeah, and 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 you get that pretty quick, you know, yeah. um, and um, then you you know that ten meters just kind of feels like it's very easy, you know. Mm -hmm. And you trust yourself, you trust your uh, knowledge mm -hmm. and your skills that you know you have and you've been practicing them, that now you can go deeper, you know, and na naturally you want to go a little bit deeper, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you do, don't, do not know uh, exactly what you are doing, uh, this is where it can be a dangerous mm -hmm. sport, yeah. you know. Uh, this is, uh, I, I've done three beginner courses I think in my time it was kind of like different agencies different instructors mm -hmm. you know and I was just so curious in, in, in it, you know and I just wanted to find um, more and more information about how to do it right what I should focus on you know mm -hmm. and um, yeah slowly slowly I just get more addicted to it you know um, then I started in our sister center in Dahab where I met uh, you guys you know Alex and all, all the guys and uh, it's great to share the passion and for people uh, who really um, who really want to try this you know yeah you can give them a piece of your passion and um, most of the time it's just uh, really uh, they're hooked and I see yeah. people now uh, who have been training three four five years ago uh, and they're diving deep now you know yeah. and they're continuing they keep yeah. on training they keep on doing it you know and it's great to see that and yeah. I mean you know the cool thing about freedom is that it's something that more or less suits everyone you know as long as you're you're, you're physically you know okay yeah, shape and, yeah. and you're not panicking um, and stuff like this but i mean compared to what we do you know with the skydiving stuff and base jumping and it's like yeah it's a very limited uh, amount of people you can share that passion with compared to for example freediving yeah i mean all you need to, to do to start freediving is be able to swim you know and what i would uh, what i would say would be be comfortable snorkeling you know mm. you, you have mask and snorkel and if you're comfortable uh, just staying on the surface and looking down and breathing and moving around you know you don't even have to go down you know this is something you learn in the course mm. being comfortable breathing through snorkel and being on the water you know not being scared and you're good to go start free diving you mm. know uh, you, you don't even need to be super fit you don't need to uh, do any uh, do, do, do super, a lot of sports, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, free diving is not a sport where you need a lot of muscle. Actually, the less the better. Yeah. Um, you need to be relaxed here and be positive, you know. Uh, wanting to try, wanting to learn uh, something new and not be afraid of the... Like, not be scared of the water, I would say. Of course. Yeah, and I know people... Yeah, I used to be that before, you know. Like, mm -hmm. when I was a kid, uh, when I was swimming on the top of the surface, I was so scared about... I never wanted to know how deep it was. Yeah. Because then, as soon as I know, I was like, no, 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 like, oh shit, you yeah. know, like, oh, it's a hundred meters deep, and yeah. starting to think, oh, what's down there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been teaching people free diving who have been scared to go the water deeper than this. Yeah. You know, so as soon as you know the tippy toes start uh, losing their grip on the mm. on the bottom, it's like mm. panic, you know. Mm. And they're free diving now. Mm. You know, one of them is my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so cool. uh, I mean, uh, you starting as soon as there is, a, a, you want to challenge yourself a little bit, you know, yeah. a little by little, you know, uh, baby steps. You can do it, you know. Uh, if you are uh, happy to uh, give yourself a little challenge and maybe uh, um, not face your fears, because I wouldn't call it fear, but just uh, being a little bit worried, but knowing that. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be fine. Just uh, you know, a little bit of uh, t take a small baby steps. Yeah. You can do it, you know. And it starts with snorkeling. You know, just getting comfortable uh, snorkeling. 
not everyone is immediately comfortable in the water or snorkeling, you know. But this is also why having an instructor is important because most of the time they have the experience, they know what's next step, you know. You might want to go and go to deep water, mm -hmm. you know. But instructor, when they see you, they go like, okay, we know that your next step is this, you know, and the next step is this, you know, mm -hmm. and this inspires comfort and confidence in you and makes you uh, learn mm -hmm. quicker, faster and more, more enjoyable, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, what is the difference then, for example, now I did the level one, which yeah. is the 20 meters and learning more about the breathing techniques and... Yeah, and so for that, and for example, if yeah. I want to go to level two, what's yeah. what's the main difference? Well, uh, in level one, um, we have the core skills that you need to learn, you know, and that is breathing, you know, recover breathing at the end of the dive, equalizing, uh, finning duck diving, uh, moving underwater, you know, your orientation underwater, things like this. Um, next step is you're still working on the core skills. Uh, that's something that uh, you will be working uh, on yeah, for always. for a longer time, mm -hmm. you know, until this is like pretty much perfect. Uh, but we are adding things that you need to know uh, to go deeper. Uh, the equalization, we want to make sure it's perfect because the deeper you go, the, the harder it will be, more challenging the equalization will be. So we want to try to fix that before you get to the point where you start having real difficulties equalizing. And uh, like in particular yourself, you are already equalizing pretty well, but most people, they need extra polishing of the technique to mm -hmm. make that work really good and reliable at the depth. And then uh, the part is deeper diving. So we are focusing more on free fall mm -hmm. and uh, getting a better free fall, getting um, uh, the progression of your dive. Uh, so you have... You know that your dives are not too long; they're not too short. You're trying to find the right, um, the sweet uh, speed for yourself, for your style, um, that that can get you to the depth uh, where you want to go. And um, yeah, it's all the stuff that you learn more uh, in depth, mm. uh, plus new stuff like uh, flexibility, equalization, mm. you know, free falling, and basically your technique needs to be uh, as smooth as possible. And you naturally want to go deeper, you know. So like the, today, you already reached uh, 20 meters quite comfortably, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and basically, the, oh, the depth between uh, the in level two is between 20 to 30 meters. Mm -hmm. And 30 meters, you start yeah. feeling that, you know, you know, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so deep. It would be fun to get to 30 and you just stand there on the ground and just look like, yeah. Sick. So. Uh, around 30 meters uh, is normally where also your mind starts being playing a bigger part, you know. Mm. So this is where uh, if you want to focus on uh, your mind and your um, psychology while free diving and being able to relax and all that at that depth, uh, all your technique needs to be a uh, hundred percent. Yeah, it needs to be really good. Yeah. So you don't worry about your duck diving finning yeah, and yeah, yeah. free falling and things like this. Uh, you know that that is going to work really well, then you can focus on more relaxation. Mm. And that's where you go into the Zen and you go, mm. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, incredible. Deeper dives, uh, as, as beautiful your diving is now, at the start is always really, really good. You're learning so many things, yeah. you're progressing so fast, then you see really the benefits. Yeah. The deeper you go, the more... Um, yeah, the deeper in the free diving uh, you go, you know, like in your own, yeah. you understand what the free diving means, you go deeper into that. Mm. So whatever you feel now, you feel even more mm. uh, when you go deeper. Yeah, I can yeah. imagine. And that really gives you a confidence. The visual down there, it's, yeah. you can't even see the top anymore. Yeah. At some point, you in training, you, um, like now we have the wreck and, you know, uh, at some point when you dive deep, it's all just you, you know. Mm. So like all everything, you you even uh, stop using mask and things like this, and you're just diving with your eyes closed, and you are totally zen, you know. Mm. So this is uh, something that uh, people really like in deep free dive. So they go deep, take off their mask. 
No, it's on the surface. So you're already go starting okay. your dive without mask yeah, or... Yeah. You can sometimes use like a goggles just to see in case emergency. Yeah. But normally uh, most of your dive you have maybe your eyes closed or just slightly yeah. closed, you know. Um, and you're just trying to really focus on yourself, uh, on relaxation and some, some skills that you need to go down, you know. Other than that, you're pretty much switched off. Oh, but yeah, so the free fall, like when you do the free falls, I guess, let's say you're doing dives, uh, what's the record now? 127 or something? Uh, in, in swimming down and up, I think it's 132. Wow. Yeah. So, 130. so for example, then when you get to the free fall, the free fall just accelerates? Yeah. Because when you get to a point, it just goes faster and faster. You're not going to get the speed you get on that. <laughs> no, 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 for sure not. But uh, it does accelerate. Um, uh, on the current weighing you had on you, um, you're going to be probably reaching the maximum speed between 30, 35 meters. Uh, so it does accelerate until about 30, 35 meters. And then... Per minute. Uh, no, at the no. depth, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you started, let's say, now at uh, 15 or something like this, yeah. and then you accelerate, 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 the deeper you go, the faster you will be going, yeah. and then at about around 30, 35 meters, uh, you should same. be reaching the maximum, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's good when it's around one meter per second, but you yeah, can go faster, a little bit faster than that as well, you can go slower as well, uh, yeah. but ideally, this is the part where you are not having to do anything, other than mm -hmm. streamline and equalize. And equalize yeah. uh, so this do you then do constant equalization when you're in free fall? It uh, depends. I normally would say uh, just uh, gentle uh, equalizations, uh, trying to because the deeper you are, the less you need to equalize. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're just trying to equalize your ears. Uh, you need to be very, very aware of uh, the equalization. Mm -hmm. So when you feel like you need to equalize, you just put enough air there to equalize your ears. So you're trying to not equalize too much, but also not equalize too little. Mm. Ideally, you know, mm. it's always better to equalize more, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's very fascinating. So, um, yes, yeah, the people keep coming here, we keep training, and you always learn new things, mm. always, yeah. And maybe you learn something, and then you come again two years later and then you forgot that you learned that you know yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh yeah sure why <laughs> yeah why did i ask this you know and um you can you can try so many things you know like the mono thing diving mm -hmm. without mask with just a nose clip mm -hmm. and when you're diving without nose clip um and as soon as you're relaxed with that you know the feeling that you've experiencing now mm -hmm. with the mask is doubled mm -hmm. you know it's like because it's a mammalian dive reflex, you know, our body just goes into conservation mode, like sea mam like yeah, a... Do you want to explain a little bit more about that for the people? Yeah, who... yeah. So basically we share um, a same uh, primal uh, instincts with uh, some uh, uh, with mammals and marine mammals. Mm -hmm. um, so at some point of evolution, we have shared that uh, line together and that has stayed with us until current, yeah. uh, current time. And basically, yeah, pretty much the same as the whales, no? Uh, yeah, the whales are more adapted. For yeah. sure. Uh, but some uh, some of the instincts for like diving, diving like mammals, uh, we have the same. Mm -hmm. uh, so some, uh, for example, of those are the slowing down of the heart rate. So for example, um, seals, which are also mammals, mm -hmm. uh, they can slow down their heart rate to one beat per minute wow. on the dives. Yeah. Uh, is extreme. Yeah. And you don't need much oxygen. No. <laughs> uh, uh, we can also slow down our heart rate. And uh, again, in our case, it depends of how um, how much you are in the water. You don't even need to be free diving. A lot of people surfing, swimming, they have strong mammalian diver for just from doing that, just from being in the water. But yeah, free divers, because they are particularly doing uh, diving on the, on the breath hole, this is particularly uh, trained and stronger. So the heart rate can go down to... 30 beats per minute. You know? Wow, yeah, that's yeah. pretty low. Some extreme cases, maybe a little bit less, yeah. I mean, if you imagine that kind of that kind of heart rate is normally not being even picked up in the hospital. You're declared dead, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're like, okay, psst, you know? <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, so there, there's been people doing tests uh, where they actually did a breath hold connected to uh, 
EKG and mm. uh, yeah, I went down uh, below 30, you know? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, this normally effect is, uh, you can see it more predominantly in people who naturally have a little bit higher heart rate. So mm -hmm. some people can have heart rate uh, around uh, maybe a resting heart rate around 70, 80 beats per minute. And then as soon as uh, this instinct kicks in, you'll see that going dropping down really, really quick, you know. Mm. Uh, some other ones are uh, the way we cope with the pressure. Um, so as you're diving down on a, on a full lungs, your uh, lungs are being compressed uh, in depth. The deeper you are, the more they compress. And at some point, uh, they almost become uh, like a rigid airspace. Yeah. Um, now, if you would continue going diving deeper, uh, you're risking the imploding of your lungs, you know, yeah. so they would just crush the inside, you know, or they would just... Which is actually fine, right? Um, it, it's not really. <laughs> no, but like that doesn't happen. That, yeah, it doesn't really happen. Okay. Uh, imploding stuff. So it's, so it's not normal for the people who goes to like 100 meters and stuff that it actually... No, imploded. like the whales, they have some part of their um, chest can actually fold uh -huh. totally, you know. Now, we, our chest cannot do that. But what happens in our chest is uh, something is called a blood shift. It was researched in about uh, 1960, uh, where they found out that the lungs, uh, capillaries around the lungs, around the alveoli, uh, swell up and fill with the blood, taking up for this reducing volume of the airspace. So basically equalizing your lungs on the way down. Mm. And this is the same thing that's happening to all marine mammals, uh, whales, I mean, there are some whales they can dive a kilometer deep, you know? Uh, wow. Yeah, so they have more adapted lungs to be yeah. going that deep, you know? And um, yeah, other, other, other things like the spleen contraction, you know, uh, our spleen contains red blood cells. Yeah, yeah. It's like extra bank of uh, ready to go for oxygenated red blood cells. And that uh, is also released during the breath hold to aid us, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the oxygen consumption around the whole body. Uh, and for the brain and we have pretty small spleens but um, whales yeah. uh, dolphins you know they have huge spleens yeah. so they get massive boost of oxygen during yeah. these dives yeah um, yeah uh, the way our body manages the blood um, circulation uh, to conserve the heat and to conserve the oxygenated uh, blood for vital organs is the same you know um, these are all all these effects are uh, trainable and very quickly you can train them mm. um, and what's amazing if you are uh, relaxed enough during your free dive you can feel when the mammalian dive reflex starts mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a bit funny because there's a side effect kind of side effect of mammalian dive reflex which is a need to pee yeah, okay. you know, so when you get a really strong uh, reflex, uh, normally you uh, feel like you need to pee. You know, uh, this is just your body shifting the fluids in your in uh, mm -hmm. inside of you, uh, especially the oxygenated blood close to your core, and then your body goes like, okay, there's too much blood in the core area, and then the bladder takes over and it uh, takes some water out of it, and then you feel like you need to pee. You pee it yeah, out, yeah, yeah. just water, you know. Yeah. Um, I did that a lot the last couple of days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that means you have a you have a good, you know, your uh, mammalian dive reflex is working and it's on. Yeah. Now, it, you need to make sure you hydrate afterwards because this yeah. is a good way to lose a lot of fluids, and especially being in a hot uh, place like mm -hmm. this and diving and doing an activity. So the rehydration afterwards is very important. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean. Our body uh, is uh, is ready more than we think for uh, many activities, yeah, not just free diving. That's crazy. Uh, you just kind of need to go and uh, tap into it, uh, and you'll be amazed of uh, what you can do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Once you learn to adapt, uh, the body can yeah yeah can sustain a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, what would be your like tip for? Anybody who wants to just get into free diving, obviously they should definitely come here to do a course with you. As yeah. Far as, I felt, as far as I feel, I mean, already in two days, how much I've learned and and uh, and, and how much I've progressed, you know, yeah. and then the fact that you're very calm, like every time you come down, it's like, 
you have this very calm energy thanks which is actually very important in, in an activity like this and of course alex uh, suggested that we came to do this with you and obviously for for that reason as well mm -hmm. you know so i yeah i couldn't yeah. i couldn't say anything else besides uh thank you for that and and uh for all of you guys that maybe wants to come and do this definitely call paul that's for sure every time i uh, see a student i see myself uh i always try to relate to the struggles you know that mm. the people uh, uh, have and i had uh, most of them <laughs> myself yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's always a way to overcome something, you know, uh, you just need a, maybe a right approach and uh, some helpful tips uh, mm. from somebody who maybe been there, you know, mm. um, or at least somebody who's seen uh, things, you know, mm. uh, like this. Uh, and I would say uh, if somebody wants to start uh, with free diving or want to try it at least, um, yeah, just make sure that you are, uh, you are, um, um, confident in the water uh, mm. like snorkeling you're happy snorkeling mm. it's a perfect way to start uh, free diving at that point uh, you can learn a lot uh, and um, we normally uh, always it's not like okay it's, it's it's not like a factory where you everyone starts the same place yes but we always try to I always try to be um, uh, individual with a pe person so yeah. if I, even if I have three people on the same course I'm always approaching everyone yeah. with their training individually and i think this is uh, the most fastest way to progress because mm. there's no point for you to work on something you know what to do uh and you're doing well uh focus on something that maybe you need to work on to progress next you know mm. and yeah uh, but yeah if you are a lot of people uh, start uh, with the practice of breath holding at home I would just give uh, one advice to make sure if you do uh, do if you do it in the water, even in the pool or in the bath, um, have someone watching you and have someone uh, checking that you are all right. Mm. Uh, some sort of buddy that knows uh, uh, what you're doing. Um, just telling a lifeguard in the pool, oh, I'm gonna just gonna swim a few laps underwater, is normally doesn't cut it because they just see you diving underwater. They see you being down there for a while. They don't know if you are actually fine or not. Mm. So there has to be eye on uh, contact, you know. So yeah, don't take it lightly. One of the, not one, but few of the best world free divers have died at pool in the pool at home doing it by themselves. So uh, let's learn from this mistake, you know. Um, and another one is if you if you want to practice your breath hold, do it dry in your bed in a couch. Focus on uh, calm breathing. Um, don't breathe more than you need at that point. Focus on relaxation. Focus on um, your exhales. Uh, don't make them too long, but uh, just uh, natural uh, mm. exhales. And then... Um, and we're going to make sure to add some um, some video links in the description so people yeah. can find like good videos where it's actually like... You know, for yeah. example, when I came here, I didn't even know that... Oh, I'm not supposed to uh, exhale, exhale yeah. when I feel like I want to exhale. Yeah. So you know all of these uh, smaller tips that we can. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The most of it is uh, relaxation, and uh, you will feel at some point when you're holding your breath that you uh, feel like you want to breathe. You know, uh, this is not necessarily a. It doesn't feel very good, but it's not a bad uh, feeling. Mm. Um, Try to uh, just hold it for a little bit if you can. Um, don't push yourself over the urge to breathe for too long, you know. Just try to feel it, get comfortable with it. And you will see that more and more you do it, it will get more yeah. and more comfortable. Don't be afraid of having a full lungs of air. Um, a lot of people don't like to hold a full, full breath. It's actually good for stretching your lungs uh, to getting them adapted to full breath. Um, and when you're holding your breath, try to hold it in your throat here, not, yeah. not like a frog yeah, yeah. or with the, yeah. <laughs> uh, and that will help you to also relax a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Well, there's uh, many, many things, um, that, um, mistakes that you, you could do, you know, um, for more, just come over. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, for sure. I mean, the best. Uh, we, we're definitely gonna arrange some uh, some of these happiness camps that we want to do. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, 
uh, I'm already see. looking forward to that. I think this place is definitely one of one of those destinations. Yeah, man. It's uh, that's why I. Uh, I have already here. a few people that wants yeah. to join us. So. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. It's perfect. gonna be good. Thank you so much for your time uh, and yeah. for uh, these last couple of days. I look forward to, of course, more the next couple of days as yeah, well. Yeah. Now the fun begins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, bro.